just got in this Bayite ferro rod and I don't know, I've probably bought four or five of these over the years. I keep one in every kit. Um, it started with, I think it was around 2007 or 2009. Bayite had the half inch by six inch ferro rods and I carried those for a long time. I really like them. But then when I started getting into like ultralight backpacking and that sort of thing, I was looking for something a little bit smaller, didn't weigh as much, still functional. And I really like these because they have the handle where you can hold them. They have a pretty decent length of ferro rod. They have the striker and you've got some cordage. So anyways, I've... I bought these pretty consistently and there's a couple other brands that I bought and one of the problems with the other brands that I used to always have is that the ferro rod would come out of the little wooden handle. So because of that other brand I've always checked every one when I buy them. <laughs> and this one's brand new, literally just taken out of the box and look, literally, like what good is that? It's like uh, you can kind of see that there's just not really a lot on there. But this isn't a big deal. Like I'm not even mad about it. And I'll tell you why. Because it's pretty easy to fix. To fix it, you're going to need some sort of a epoxy. Which I have here. And uh, you're going to need like a piece of cardboard to put the epoxy on. <laughs> And hopefully this epoxy is not dried up because I've had this for a while. Then you're going to squeeze some of the epoxy out onto the cardboard. Hopefully. Seems like I have one side is clogged up or something. Now they're both coming out. But you're going to put some epoxy on there. And hopefully get the cap on your epoxy to seal it off. Then you're going to mix it up. I'm just going to use a toothpick. Once I have that mixed up, I'm then going to take my ferro rod, the same end that already had glue on it. You can kind of see it's discolored there on the end. I want to put some new epoxy on there. Try to get it about up to where the other, the old, the original factory line was. That's probably a little too far, but I can wipe it off. Then we're just going to stick it in there. You know, actually, I think I'm going to put some of that inside of there also. If it oozes out, it oozes out. This is the first one that I've ever had by Bayite that ever come apart that like that. And like I said, I've got, well, I've got three kits and they've all got one in there made by Bayite. So then we're just going to squeeze that in there. So there's going to be kind of one problem is it's going to lock up on me and push the ferro rod out. But I will eventually get it in there, I promise. The other option would be that I could actually shove that in there and then just take some tape, duct tape, and kind of hold it in place till it dries. So I think I'm going to actually do that. I will take and wipe off that excess. Let me get some tape. Didn't have any duct tape handy, but I got this other tape. It'll work, I think. I hope. I'm gonna make it work. It's just plain old masking tape. So.
I think that'd be all right. So after this dries and sets up, I'll take this tape off and then I'll get it cleaned up. I wish I could get just a little bit more. I might try to get just a little bit more tension on that. I didn't want to put it too tight because I was afraid that the tape would break. But now that I've got one on there, I'll go ahead and try to get it on there a little tighter. Perfect. So I'm basically just using tape to hold that rod in there. I'm going to go ahead and just let this set up. And then after it sets up, I'll deal with the excess that's on the ferro rod. Which as you can just about tell, basically you can use a striker or something like that to clean off the excess. But I'll get that fixed and I'll bring you back after it sets up tomorrow. So I think it's actually been two or three days since I first recorded this, but it's still sitting here. I actually picked it up. It actually stayed stood up for the whole time, but I looked at it earlier uh, before I started this video. I was about to rip the tape off, and I was like, ah, oh, I better record this because that'll leave people hanging. So we'll go ahead and take this tape off. I've done this with other brands i really like the brand and let me tell you why i bought some other ones and when they had the half inch by six inch ones which they still have literally the one that i bought in 2009 i still have and it's it's one of the first ones i had and so as i started getting more into like long distance hiking and backpacking and getting back into like wilderness survival concepts and that sort of thing i bought some other brands and what i noticed was no matter which ferro rods you buy they're not all the same some have a different hardness like the chemical makeup is different and that chemical makeup makes the ferro rods either harder or softer and that harder and softer is kind of dependent on the quality and the amount of sparks that you get. Now, that matters a lot because I've had some ferro rods that will barely throw any sparks, but they last for forever. <laughs> and then I've had other ferro rods that throw a gazillion sparks and they don't last no time. And so, kind of like the reason that I like this brand so well, in all honesty, is because they're kind of in between. They throw good sparks, but it's not an excessive number of sparks. So that means that it, that it lasts longer than some of the really cheap ones. Now, there's another very popular brand that a lot of people compare this brand to. There's actually two that I can think of that I see them get compared to. Let, let me actually go get one of those because I, I just had it out the other day. So, hold on. Alright, so I don't want to dog the brand because I actually probably have two or three of these. And you'll probably recognize the brand by the shape of the handle, if you're familiar with ferro rods. But I use these. The problem is, every single one of theirs I've had to glue in. You can actually see it. <laughs> uh, maybe. You can actually see, like, the, the glue glistening where I've had to glue it in place. So, every one of theirs, I've had to fix this. Now, what that does... You know, the fact that you can remove this, if this gets to be so thin, you could probably 
put some pliers or something on there, twist that off, and replace it with another new, just the insert. Um, so that's kind of nice. The problem is, this is one of those ones that they last for forever because this is so much harder. Um, right there is a really good example. You see, I had to scrape that numerous times. It'll throw sparks, but it doesn't throw them very good. It'll last for forever because you're basically not shaving that much off. And I'm using this striker. What I'm getting at, though, is I know that this striker always works great on every ferro rod. Uh, it works way better than using a knife. I really love these things. I actually bought a, they, you can buy like a pack of five or ten, I don't remember now. But I had so many kits, and I'm so funny about my knives. I will strike a ferro rod with a knife spine, but I don't like to. Because you do it enough, you start to see that your metal starts to pit. And then, that just tells you over time, you're doing damage to your knife. So I really like these strikers. But, these strikers are also great for showing you the quality... <laughs> Of ferro rods like seriously if you were in a survival situation and you were trying to get a fire with this ferro rod how many times I got to strike this thing you see what I'm saying and that's actually why because generally when I start a ferro rod I always keep the striker in the same spot so you'll see one side will be wore down the other ones will still be the factory edge and you can see this one's got multiple places where I've started it just because this ferro rod is so hard it doesn't hardly throw sparks now you take this one I'm not even going to clean the black off and it'll probably throw sparks uh, see the difference Watch me catch my house on fire. Let's go back to this one. Actually, well, the reason why I think that the first few times I did that was, is I think that there was a rough edge put on this by this ferro rod, and then it helped this one throw sparks more. But this has got a sharp edge. It should be, you've seen it, it was throwing sparks great with this one. But as soon as I went back to this one, it worked a few times, then quit working. And we can probably sit here and go all day long, and we'll get a random spark every now and then, but it won't be very often. And it's just this, this ferro rod, the steel... Comp the composition of the actual ferro rod makes the ferro rod too hard to throw sparks. The Bayites, they're always not too hard, not too soft, so they're kind of like in the middle. And that's why I like them so much, and I think this is a great example to show us to you um, how those can differ. So, now we have this fixed. Definitely not going to pull that cap out of there. Another reason why that I like the Bayite one, this one in particular, is because you do get a length of paracord. So if you're out in the woods and you need to make a bow drill, you can make a bow drill very easily. So you've got the striker, you got the 550 paracord, and you have your ferro rod. And I think that's a good combination. Whereas this one, it comes with a little bit. Actually, no, it didn't. I put this on there. Um, I can tell because of the way the ends are cut. And in that particular knot is what I usually do when I'm putting a ferro rod or a 550 paracord on a ferro rod. So, um, but yeah, there's just not much cord on there. I mean, you could use it to tie a stick if... You were building a shelter, but that's about all the use that one would be because it's just not long enough. Anyways, I'm just rambling now. As always, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Hopefully 2023 is the year I get back to nor... nor blah, 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 blah. Hopefully 2023 is the year I get back to more normal content. Thank you.